Good day class, this is Ma'am Renz again and welcome to Science Time. We are now on Module 5, Shake and Explore. And this is the pattern on how you're going to transfer all your answers to your ISN. Do not forget that you can still submit it online. Ang ating album name is Quarter 2, Module 5, Shake and Explore. For our most essential learning competencies, we have differentiate the epicenter of an earthquake from its focus. Number 2, intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude. And third, active and inactive faults. Then, for the objectives, we have to differentiate epicenter from focus and intensity from magnitude to discuss the scale adapted in the Philippines to describe the intensity and magnitude of an earthquake. Three, differentiate active and, and inactive faults. For using a map, locate and describe active and inactive faults in the Philippines. For the pretest, let's answer. Let me read to you number one. Which of the following best completes the statement? Blank is the location in the earth where the earthquake originates and directly above it, you will find the blank. A. Epicenter and focus. B. Fault and wave. C. Focus and epicenter. D. Wave and fault. Number 2. An earthquake is described according to its magnitude and intensity. Which of the following best distinguishes one from the other? So, this is, these are the choices. A. Magnitude uses capital Roman numerals, while intensity uses Arabic numerals. B. Magnitude basis of structures of buildings. Intensity, not a basis of structures of buildings. C. Magnitude measured using seismograph, while intensity measured using PEIS, or Philbrox Earthquake Intensity Scale. D. Magnitude, qualitative measure of earthquakes, while intensity, quantitative measure of earthquakes. Next, number 3. The FIVOX Earthquake Intensity Scale or PEIS is used to measure the intensity of an earthquake. Which of the following serve as the basis for the development of this scale? A. 1973 Ragay Gulf Earthquake B. 1983 Lawag Earthquake C. 1990 Luzon Earthquake or D. 1996 Bohol Earthquake 4. Study the table which shows the comparison between an active fault and an inactive fault. Which comparison is or are correct? So, yung table sa baba. Letter... A, A is correct and B is incorrect. B, B is correct and A is incorrect. C, both A and B are correct. D, both A and B are incorrect. So, you follow the statement uh, using the table given below. Let me read to you. A, for active fault, it had not displayed any seismic activity for more than thousands of years, while inactive fault had not displayed evidence of seismic activity during the last 10,000 years. B. Statement. Active fault, it had, it had displayed evidence of seismic activity during the last 10,000 years, and inactive fault had not displayed any seismic activity for more than thousand of years. 
So, alin dun yung tama? Okay? For um, the choices A, B, C, and D dun sa taas. 5. Study the map at the right. Ito yun. Which place lies along an active fault? Celebe C, A, Davao City, B, Puerto Princess Ta, Puerto Princesa City, C, or D, Sulu, C. Okay, so let's answer. For number one, the correct answer is C, Focus Epicenter. Focus is the location in the earth where earthquake originates and directly above it, you will find the epicenter. Next, number 2. Correct answer is letter C. Magnitude you, is measured using seismograph, while intensity is measured using PEIS or FIVOX, in, uh, FIVOX earthquake intensity scale. Number 3. Correct answer for the basis of PEIS is the 1990 Luzon earthquake. Let's, uh, that's letter C. For number 4, from this table, correct answer is B. So, letter B is correct and A is incorrect. And number 5, it's letter B, Davao City. So, next, for the looking back, you're going to figure out the correct answer using the the blocks or the diagram below. Okay. So, this is already uh, a previous topic for the different stresses and faults. Okay. Now, for the brief introduction, let me read to you. This is very important. Have you ever experienced sudden shaking of the ground or earthquake? Of course. Now, if yes, then how did you feel about it? When it happens, don't get too scared and avoid panicking. Because an earthquake is a natural phenomenon caused by a sudden release of energy in the Earth's lithosphere that creates seismic waves. According to the data recorded by FIVOX, our country has an average of 2,000 earthquakes every year. This is because the Philippines lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which causes the country to have frequent seismic and volcanic activities. Many earthquakes of smaller magnitude occur very regularly due to the convergence of major tectonic plates in the region. So, yung earthquake daw hindi dapat nagkokos ng takot at panik sa atin kasi halos halos araw-araw at every year uh, meron tayong earthquake na nagaganap average na sa bawat taon 2000 yung iba mild lang yung iba halos hindi ramdam no? so regular naman na nangyayari na nagbabanggaan o nagbubungguan daw yung mga tectonic plates natin no earthquakes occur mostly along fault lines. A fault may, may either be active or inactive according to its activity. In addition, there are several active faults in our country which explains why we experience earthquakes very often. So, yun pala yung dahilan. No, napakadami nating active fault dito. The following figure shows where an earthquake originates. When two blocks of the earth yun yung tectonic plates, suddenly slip past one another, it causes friction, which in turn releases energy in the form of seismic waves. So, alam na natin yan last topic. These waves result in an earthquake. Now, the epicenter is the location of the surface of the earth directly above the focus. So, ito yung nandun sa ibabaw. And then, yung center is the focus. So, focus now is also known as the hypocenter. Is the location in the earth where the earthquake starts or the point within the earth where seismic waves originate. So, we already discussed it last time. 
sa ating topic about earthquake. So, this is just a brief introduction. Now, let us study the, the picture. So, as you can see here, it's very clear. The parts is also detailed. No? So, we have here uh, the earth's crust according to the legend so this portion the left and the right that's the earth's crust and then do not forget we already discussed the foot wall and the hanging wall so again this is the foot wall on the left where you can rest your foot that's why it's foot wall no? and then the hanging wall so as you can see pwede natin pagsabitan yung tip dun sa nakikita natin malapit sa may gitna so yung tip nun para siyang nasasabitan kaya siya hanging wall and then we have here the fault line or the fault trace and then we have here the focus yung kung saan nagsimula and then above it is the epicenter and then the fault plane yung fault plane hanggang baba yan yun yung pisngi okay? and then the area kung saan yung crack or break, yan, yung buong yan na nakikita nyo kung nasan yung fault line or fault, and fault scarp okay, yun yung fault andun yung break or crack again, how can you remember which is foot wall and hanging wall, so take a look on the picture flashing on your screen Ayan, si foot wall, kung saan mo na-rest yung katawan mo or yung foot. Then, hanging wall, pwede mo siyang sabitan. Okay? Now, fault is a break or a crack or fracture on the earth's crust. While the fault line is the trace of fault. Okay? Kaya nga may nakita tayo kanina sa diagram na fault trace. So, that's also fault line. And then fault plane this is the flat surface between two crusts it's where the fault slip or fault movement happens while the focus is the place where the fault begin to slip so dun siya unay nagsisimula it is where the first movement occurs is the origin of the earthquake tinatawag din siyang hypocenter while the epicenter is the spot directly above the focus. Epi means above. Center. Above the center. Next. Again, do not forget that earthquake is just uh, one example under the astrophysm. Okay, so it refers to the deformation of the earth's crust and more especially to folding and faulting. Uh, the astrophysm can be considered part of the whole process of geotectonics. It comes from the Greek word meaning twisting. So, uh, earthquake is an example of the astrophysm. This is sudden shaking, yung biglaan. It is the shaking of the surface of the earth resulting from the sudden o biglaan release of energy in the earth's stratosphere that creates seismic waves while seismic waves these are the vibrations that travel through the body of the earth now let's watch this video for better understanding the earth is covered in tectonic plates that slowly move around its surface most of the time we don't feel a thing the places where they meet are called fault lines and that's where most earthquakes happen. The edges of the faults are rough and sometimes get stuck together. There is then a build-up of energy as the plates continue trying to move or come under pressure from other plates. When it becomes too great, the plates suddenly slip, releasing energy in seismic waves that shake the earth as they move through it. Earthquakes are recorded by sensitive instruments and measured on the Richter scale. It's an exponential scale, which means every number up is a tenfold increase in the size of the earthquake. Earthquakes that measure up to about four, or with epicenters far below the Earth's surface, 
are barely felt. At six, some buildings are generally damaged, depending on the quality of construction and how deep below the earth the earthquake's origin occurs. Quakes close to the surface produce more damaging energy waves. But even earthquakes this size can be devastating. The one that struck Christchurch in New Zealand measured 6.3, but killed nearly 200 people. In the sevens, buildings can separate from their foundations. Underground pipes may be broken, and there will be visible cracks in the earth. A magnitude seven earthquake caused the deaths of about 220,000 people when it struck Haiti in 2010. An earthquake measuring nine or more on the Richter scale will leave almost total devastation and the energy waves will be visible as they move through the Earth. The earthquake behind the Boxing Day tsunami measured 9.1, and it was a magnitude 9 that devastated part of Japan in 2011. Unfortunately, natural disasters are out of our control, but what we can do is put money aside to ensure there's a piggy bank ready to go in an emergency, when funds are needed urgently. Find out more at worldvision.com.au slash emergency prepare. Ayan. So nakita na natin yung video and then nakita natin yung effect ng earthquake sa buhay ng tao, sa environment, sa mga infrastructures and buildings and also kung gaano kalakas yung isang earthquake. Now, how strong earthquake is? Yun naman yung next natin. Uh, it can be either through unobservable effects or pwede din naman through its strength. Now, when we say intensity, these are the observable effects of the earthquake in different places eto yung nakikita natin na na mga building sa nasira ayan, kung ano yung epekto niya sa tao sa infrastructure sa buildings, ayan sinusulat siya in Roman numerals nakikita nyo sa screen kung ano yung Roman numeral, yun yung hindi natin isinusulat na numbers yung the usual way hindi siya yun, Roman numeral pero pag magnitude ito yung tunay na lakas or energy ng isang earthquake sinusulat siya sa Hindu Arabic numbers ito yung numbers na usual nating sinusulat na no? pag nag uh, susulat tayo nagco-quiz di ba may mga numbering yung papers natin so yun yung Hindu Arabic so just like the the big one Diba sabi ang laka, ang magnitude noon or strength or energy is 7. Okay, around 7. So isusulat natin siya sa Hindu Arabic, hindi sa Roman numerals. Now, the agency na humahawak ng uh, ng pag-aaral, pagmo-monitor ng ating earthquake sa Philippines is the FIVOX Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology and meron tayong ginagamit sa Pilipinas para masukat kung gaano yung epekto ng earthquake sa ating kapaligiran at sa buhay ng tao ang tawag doon ay PEIS or FIVOX Earthquake Intensity Scale again, intensity Okay. Ibig sabihin, ito yung epekto. Yung damage na naibigay sa atin ng um, earthquake. But, hindi magnitude. Pwede na mafivox earthquake magnitude uh, scale. Uh, bakit intensity lang? Uh, kasi, um, hindi natin masasabi exact no, kung gano talaga kalakas yung magnitude kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng 
observable effects. Kung gaano yung epekto niya. Kasi pwede kasing ang magnitude lang niya na nasukat is 1. Eh, pero nakatira ka dun sa pawid-pawid, tas nakatira ka sa gilid ng bundok na nagka-soil erosion pa kasi wala na mga puno-puno. O, so, kahit man lang yun, pero yung observable effects niya, sobrang damaging. Iba yung, yung sukat nun, no? So, nabuo yung PEIS. O, yun lang siya. While, yung nagmamanage naman na agency sa Pilipinas, kapag may mga sakuna, is the NDRRMC ang ibig sabihin niya National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council ayan, so meron tayong uh, sismometer yung sismometer, ito yung instrument na sumusukat dun sa motion ng lupa kung sa nagmumula anong nagiging dahilan ayan nga, example na niya yung earthquake, so nakikita niya dun volcanic eruption or paggamit ng mga explosive minsan kasi sa mga mining human activities yung nagiging dahilan kung ba't biglang yumayanig yung lupa now the records of seismic waves allow seismologists to map the interior of the earth and to locate and measure the size of events like this so nakikita nyo gumagawa siya ng map or I mean graph okay? now Um, yung Mercalli intensity scale naman syempre pang intensity sya no? is uh, a seismic intensity scale used for measuring the intensity of earthquake so kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng PEIS I mean ang ginagamit ng PEIS para makapagbigay sila ng observable effects or damage uh, is using the Mercalli intensity scale it measures the effects of an earthquake while yung magnitude naman ang ginagamit naman dun is the Richter magnitude scale okay bakit Richter? kasi tao yun no? si Charles Richter so it's a scale of numbers used to tell the size or magnitude or energy of earthquakes so si Charles Richter developed the Richter scale in 1935 so matagal na pala to his scale was based on the seismogram measured by a particular type of seismometer at a distance of 100 kilometers or 62 miles from the earthquake. So, ganun yung, yung layo niya. Ito yung ano natin sa Pilipinas, uh, PEIS or the Fibox um, Earthquake Intensity Scale. 1 to ano to, um, one to ten. Yan, one to ten. So, nakikita nyo, madami siyang description, no? So, let's go with number one. Again, pag-intensity Roman numerals. So, we have here a code, SSW, MSV, DVDC. Again, SSW, MSV, DV, M DC SSW MSV DVDC oh, rhyming rhyming di ba So the first three ito yung mga medyo may hina Intensity scale Roman numeral 1 scarcely perceptible 2 slightly felt 3 weak So SSW So dito scarcely perceptible ibig sabihin uh, ramdam minsan ng iba may eh, pag talagang gising na gising, no? Uh, makikita mo yung mga nakabalance sa object, medyo uh, nagalaw yan. Yung mga water dun sa container, minsan may kita mo umiikot. Number two, slightly felt. Ito kahit papano, few individuals felt this. Lalo na kapag nakahinto lang, nasa indoors ka lang, yung mga hanging objects may kita mo nagsiswing. And then yung water sa container, may kita mo na talaga na unaikot. And then, 3 week. Okay? So, yung week, hindi ibig sabihin porke week, eh, ano, hindi naramdam. Ano na to? It's felt by many people indoors. Indoors means nasa loob. Lalo na yung mga medyo nasa taas, na bahay, buildings, ayan. Ramdam ang vibration, katulad ng may dumaan na truck. So, ganun yung ramdam, yung 
yung pagdaan nung truck na yun, naramdam mo, di ba? Yung vibration o ganun din. Kahit wala naman truck na dumaan, naramdaman mo siya. Uh, may dizziness, pagkahilo, nausea, para ka nasusuka. Yung iba ganun yung naramdaman. And then, hanging objects, swing moderately. Ito, makikita mo na talaga na nagsuswing. Okay? Visible na siya. And then, yung water sa container, umiikot talaga. Okay? Although, weak nga lang. Pero, kita mo na talaga siya na ganun yung nangyayari. And then, next, ito naman, medyo sa, ano na tayo, nasa strong, no? Kanina kasi medyo mild. Intensity 4, 5, and 6. So, Roma, Roman numerals pa din siya. Moderately strong, strong, very strong. So, MSV. Moderately strong, uh, ramdam na to ng halos lahat ng tao na nasa loob and mga tao na nasa labas kahit medyo busy-busy sila. Yung mga tulog na mababaw ang pagkakatulog na gigising, ramdam mo yung vibration. Kanina, ramdam mo yung vibration sa intensity... 3 ano lang light, parang light track yung dumaan pero dito um, vibration is felt like a passing of heavy track ayan yung mga hanging objects, nagsuswing na talaga uh, yung mga dinner plates yung mga glasses, windows and doors yan, umaalog-alog na floors and walls of food frame buildings creak, so nag lalangit-ngitan yung mga nakatayong motor mga kotse medyo na nag uh, rock slightly na sila tubig sa container medyo tumatapon-tapon na water sa containers talagang umiikot na tumatalsik ka nun. and then may tunog na naririnig and then 5 is strong na so halos sa ng tao uh, ramdam yan loob ng bahay at labas Maraming tulog ang nagigising, yung iba medyo natatakot na, natakbo na sa labas. May strong na shaking and rocking felt sa buong building. Yung mga hanging objects eh talagang nagsuswing violently. Yung mga utensils at nagtutunugan, yung iba nababasag, yung mga plates. Yung mga maliliit na magaan na unstable objects sa bahay at buildings eh tumatapon. Okay, bumabagsa. Yung liquid uh, sa isang container, natatapon na. Yung mga nakatayong vehicles, pansin mo na nagyuyugyugan. Pati yung mga leaves sa, da, sa mga puno o, o yung mga sanga, yan, nakikita mo nagsishake. And intensity 6, very strong. Ito naman, marami ng tao yung takot, nagtatakbuhan na talaga. Yung iba, nawawala yung balance, kaya natutumba. Yung mga motorista, feeling nila flat yung tires nila no and then maraming mabibigat na objects ang nagsisigalawan at nag-iiba na ng posisyon yung mga church yung mga small church bells tumutunog nagkakalampagan yung mga plaster ng wall nagkakrak na yung mga luma at sobrang lumang mga houses and other man-made structures uh, nadadamage na nasisira Okay. although yung mga mag, ma, well built structures hindi na, hindi na masyadong apektado hindi pa limited rock falls and rolling boulders occur on, in hilly to mountainous areas and escarpments so nahuhulog yung mga bato sometimes and then yung trees talagang noticeably shaken okay and then ito naman yung part na DV D means destructive, yun yung number 7, and then Roman numeral number 8, very destructive. So, dito, uh, destructive, so, halos lahat takot na, no, nagsisitakbuhan. Malakas na kasi ito, ito yung the big one range natin. Uh, people find it difficult to stand in upper floors, so, nagtutumbahan na rin pati tao, no. Uh, heavy objects and furnitures overturn or topple. Big church bells may ring. Kanina kasi, small church bells lang. Ito, malaki na. Yung mga luma at hindi magandang uh, structures ng bahay, nadadamage na. Kasama na yung mga ilan-ilan na well-built structures, slightly damaged na. 
Marami ng cracks ang nag appear sa mga dikes, mga fishman, roads, mga concrete hollow black walls. Ah, nagkakaroon na ng limited liquefaction. Okay, lateral spreading of land and landslides are observed. So, yung mga lupa natin nagkakaroon na ng damage din. Ah, lupa sa ilalim, yung tinutukoy natin, ha? And then, trees are shaken strongly. Minsan, na, ah, ano na, napuputol. Liquefaction, pag sabi natin liquefaction from the word liquid, no? Ah, liquefaction is a process by which loose saturated sand loose strength during an earthquake and will behave like liquid. So, soil is a solid. Pero dahil natatagtag yung ilalim ng lupa, no? So, yung tubig dun, nagtutubig siya. Okay? Kaya, naglulose yung hold niya. Kaya, kahit matiba yung building, wala. Nagkakarak siya bumibigay. Uh, number eight, very destructive. So, panic na lahat ng tao. Ang hirap ng tumayo. Marami ng magagandang buildings yung nasisira. Yung concrete dikes at yung mga foundation ng mga beaches, sira na. Um, yung mga railways, sa mga railways ang tren, sira. Ayan. Mga tombstone sa di-displaced, twisted, over, overturned, no? Sa mga cementeryo. Yung mga utility posts, yung mga meral ko na yan, ganyan, may nilad, mga towers, monuments, wala, sira, yan. Water and sewer pipes, uh, may be bent or twisted, broken. Tapos may liquefaction na din. Mm. May landslide, rock falls, yan. Mga boulders, yung malalaking rocks, uh, tumatapon na, nalalaglag, lalo na pag malapit sa epicenter. So, ayun fissures, mga crack, malalaki, observable na siya. And trees are violently shaken, so lumayo-layo kayo sa puno. And then, yung water nagi splash na, okay, sa mga dikes or sa river banks. And then, um, intensity scale 9 and 10 DC, devastating, completely devastating. So, sa devastating, ayan, tumitila po ni mga tao, marami na umiiyak, okay, uh, yung mga building sira na talaga, bridges, ayan, uh, sirang-sira na, yung mga maraming utility posts, towers, monuments, umangat na yan, nasira, basag, yung mga pipes ng tubig, na twist, na bent, na putol, marami ng landslide and liquefaction, uh, yung ground sira na rin, yung ilalim. Yung trees, wala na rin yan. Uh, putol na rin. Yung boulders, yung big rocks yun, uh, tumilapon na, no? And then, yung river, ganun din. Na, yung mga tubig niya, nakikita mo na hindi na siya still. And, intensity scale 10, ito, completely devastating. Alos lahat ng man-made structures destroyed massive landslide and liquefaction napaka daming uh, hindi magandang effect yung nagaganap dito sa lupa at sa iba pang iba pang mga infrastructure plus yung mga buhay ng mga tao nag-iba na yung yung river courses kung saan dumadalo yun nag-iba na and then pati yung mga lakes no nag-iiba kasi nasisira eh. And then, halos lahat ng puno tumba, tanggal yung ugat. Ayan, ganyan. And marami ng mga taong nasalanta, of course. So, yun ang ating uh, observable effects from intensity scale 1 to 10. So, ingat-ingat tayo. Ayan, next naman natin. So, sabi natin kanina, uh, ang earthquake can be uh, measured through intensity and magnitude, no? Yung fault naman, um, nakadepende yan sa activity, yan, and other forms. So, ito naman sa activity. Dito tayo sa activity. Meron tayong active and inactive fault. So, nakita natin dito, ulitin lang natin yung slide. Ayan, nakikita natin yung crack na yan. Yun. ang tawag dyan via its activity is an active fault ito yung dati nang gumalaw noon at gumagalaw ulit ngayon 
at gagalaw in the future. So, ayun, nasabi ko na. One that has moved in the past and is expected to move again. It has generated earthquakes before and is capable of producing more in the future. Meron siyang seismic activity within 10,000 years. So, 10,000 years na siyang active. So, active faulty nga nagaganap. So, patuloy yung crack. Okay, pahaba na ha, pahaba. Nakikita natin yung rock layer dun sa picture, no? Iba-iba ng kulay kasi ang pinaka matanda niya yung nasa ilalim. Okay, tas pinakabata yun nandun sa taas. So, active faulting is considered to be a geologic hazard. One related to earthquakes as a cause. So, hazardous pala yan, yung fault na yan. And then, ayun, yung mga shallow earthquakes na nagaganap madalas sa active faults. No? And then, ito yung uh, bigger picture natin. Yung nasa kaliwa, yung maikse, inactive fault yan kasi hindi na natuloy. Pero yung active fault, yung dere-derecho. Medyo fresh pa dun sa taas, nakikita nyo. Ayan siya. So, wala nang, wala nang threat yung inactive fault. Pero yung active fault, may threat pa rin yan kasi hanggang future, meron yan. So, ano naman yung inactive fault? So, nakikita natin sa picture yun yung maliit na crack. Ito yung active fault and then, toink, ayan. Isa pa, ulitin natin. Toink, ayan. Yan yung inactive fault. Tinatawag siyang joint. Okay? Yung inactive fault, tinatawag din joint or dead fault. So, inactive faults are structures that we can identify but which do not have earthquakes. So, hindi na siya nagdi-display ng seismic activity for more than 10,000 years. So, dineclare na siya as inactive fault. So, ano naman yung tsunami? Na-discuss na natin to last uh, lesson natin. Pero, for a refresh, tinatawag siyang killer wave or tidal wave. It comes from the Japanese word which means harbor wave. Anong causes niya? Isa lang doon yung earthquake. So, ito yung mga causes. One, sudden movement of ocean floor due to earthquake. Two, land slumping. So, meron din palang uh, erosion na nangyayari sa lupa ng dagat. no? And then, third, meteorite crash on the ocean floor. So, pag may bumagsak na meteorite, tas diretso sa dagat, yan ang effect. No? And then, number four, ocean volcanic eruption. Ay, madalas yan. Yung volcanic eruption, kala natin sa, ano lang, continental crust. Meron din sa ocean. And then, landslide on the seafloor. So, may landslide din pala sa ocean, no? sa seafloor. So, pag malayo pa, nasa pang-pang, malayo sa pang-pang, yung speed niya mabilis, pero hindi mo masyadong mapapansin kasi mababa lang yung height. So, pag near from the shore na, malapit ka na sa pampang, bumabagal yung speed, pero ang taas. Okay? Now, let's watch this video. In 479 BC, when Persian soldiers besieged the Greek city of Potidaea, the tide retreated much farther than usual, leaving a convenient invasion route. But this wasn't a stroke of luck. Before they had crossed halfway, the water returned in a wave higher than anyone had ever seen, drowning the attackers. The Potidaeans believed they had been saved by the wrath of Poseidon. But what really saved them was likely the same phenomenon that has destroyed countless others, a tsunami. Although tsunamis are commonly known as tidal waves, they're actually unrelated to the tidal activity caused by the gravitational forces of the sun and moon. In many ways, tsunamis are just larger versions of regular waves. They have a trough and a crest, and consist not of moving water, but the movement of energy through water. The difference is in where this energy comes from. For normal ocean waves, it comes from wind. Because this only affects the surface, the waves are limited in size and speed. But tsunamis are caused by energy originating underwater, from a volcanic eruption, a submarine landslide, 
or most commonly, an earthquake on the ocean floor, caused when the tectonic plates of the Earth's surface slip, releasing a massive amount of energy into the water. This energy travels up to the surface, displacing water and raising it above the normal sea level. But gravity pulls it back down, which makes the energy ripple outwards horizontally. Thus, the tsunami is born, moving at over 500 miles per hour. When it's far from shore, a tsunami can be barely detectable, since it moves through the entire depth of the water. But when it reaches shallow water, something called wave shoaling occurs. Because there is less water to move through, this still massive amount of energy is compressed. The wave's speed slows down while its height rises to as much as 100 feet. The word tsunami, Japanese for harbor wave, comes from the fact that it only seems to appear near the coast. If the trough of a tsunami reaches shore first, the water will withdraw farther than normal before the wave hits, which can be misleadingly dangerous. A tsunami will not only drown people near the coast, but level buildings and trees for a mile inland or more, especially in low-lying areas. As if that weren't enough, the water then retreats, dragging with it the newly created debris and anything or anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in its path. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was one of the deadliest natural disasters in history, killing over 200,000 people throughout South Asia. So how can we protect ourselves against this destructive force of nature? People in some areas have attempted to stop tsunamis with seawalls, floodgates, and channels to divert the water. But these are not always effective. In 2011, a tsunami surpassed the flood wall protecting Japan's Fukushima power plant, causing a nuclear disaster in addition to claiming over 18,000 lives. Many scientists and policymakers are instead focusing on early detection, monitoring underwater pressure and seismic activity, and establishing global communication networks for quickly distributing alerts. When nature is too powerful to stop, the safest course is to get out of its way. Ayan. So nakita natin na uh, ano yung mga ways kung paano nagkakaroon ng tsunami and kung paano pineprevent ng mga tao no yung tsunami. Dito sa atin, syempre usually dikes yung nilalagay. Pero wala tayong sea gates, no? Wala wala pa tayong technology na ganun. Pero ang pinaka natural way diyan is yung bakawan sa English mangrove. Yan. Um, pang-prevent yan ng tsunami. So, nature's way. Kasi, uh, halaman yun eh, no? Yung bakawan. Okay? So, another video. Now, let's move to your activities. So, for the activity one, two picks, two terms. So, meron tayong mga ano rito, pictures. So, nakalabel sila as A, B, C, D. And then, ayun lang, pag-aralan nyo lang yan. And then, identify the location of the focus and epicenter from the picture. So, isasagot nyo siya dun sa baba. Ayan, A, B, C, D. Mga nasa ilalim. And then, answer the guide questions below. Dalawa yan. Next. Um, activity 2. So, magsa-simulate kayo ng earthquake dito, no? So, madali lang naman yung mga uh, materials kasi improvise siya. So, mag-improvise kayo yung sismograph. Then, may kita nyo nagsulat yung ano, yung pen na nilagay nyo. Okay? So, gayahin nyo lang yan. Madali lang naman yan para makita nyo na, ah, ganito pala yung ano, yung real sismograph. And then, answer the guide questions 1 to 3. And then, for activity number 3, spoof a seismologist. Seismologist is a uh, tao yan, no? Yung nag-aaral ng earthquakes and yung vibrations niya, yung seismic activity. So, na pag aralan naman natin yung, yung uh, intensity scale natin na 1 to 10. So, balikan nyo lang yung modules nyo or itong PowerPoint na to or video lesson. Then, makikita nyo naman kung um, ano siya, kung weak, slightly perceptible, ayan, uh, strong, moderately strong, ganun. And then, 
just give some description. Huwag nyo naman isulat lahat, no? Kung ano na observable na nakikita nyo sa picture. So, maging guide nyo lang yung scale na nakikita nyo dun sa description sa PowerPoint na to. And then, answer the guide questions below. Uh, and then, for activity number 4, so, compare nyo lang, no? May Venn diagram dito. Ano yung active fault? Ano yung inactive fault? Tapos, ano yung pinagkapare sila. Yun yun nandun sa gitna. And then, part B, yan, nabigay na natin yung picture kanina uh, sa example ng active and inactive fault. So, nakita nyo naman yung crack dun sa part B. So, aralin yun and then answer the guide questions 1 to 4. For the activity 5, meron tayong map dito. No? May mga legends yan. Nakalagay dyan kung ano yung iba't ibang uri ng lines. May broken lines, may straight lines, no? And then, other drawings nakikita nyo, at makikita nyo dyan yung active fault, uh, ano yung, asan dyan yung mga trenches, yan. So, makikita nyo na napakadami pala sa Pilipinas. Kaya pala, ganun na lang yung, yung occurrences niya sa atin, yung earthquake, no? Parang usual activity na nangyayari, pero damaging madalas kasi ang daming active faults. So, study nyo lang yung figure na yan, and then, makita nyo naman yung mga nakasulat na location, tsaka anong uri ng fault. So, lagay nyo lang yung name ng fault, 1 to 5, may legend dyan na, may legend. And then, sa yung location? So, tingnan nyo sa map, ano yung geologic features niya near the fault, and then, isulat nyo kung active or inactive. Yun yung pinakamahalaga, ma-identify nyo active fault or inactive fault. Nakasulat naman doon sa legend kung active siya or inactive fault. And then, answer the great questions 1 to 3. And then, remember, ayan, may direction din yung remember natin. Labing isa yan. So, i-match nyo lang yung column A to column B. Na-discuss naman natin yan. So, masasagutan nyo yan. And then, for the reflection, ito, para ma-address natin yung problem uh, ng earthquake, hindi natin mapipigilan yan, no? kasi it's a natural disaster. Pero, pwede mo siya mapagplanuhan para yung kanyang damaging effect or yung intensity niya ay mag -less. So, ayun siya. So, PPD lang kayo mula doon sa picture na nakita nyo ng limang items sa sa tingin nyo most important kapag nandiyan na yung disaster tulad ng earthquake and then isulat nyo lang yung limang items na yun dun sa column dyan sa waba and then the second column yung reason kung bakit nyo pinili yun okay o malinaw tayo dun ha and then for the post test let me read to you the first question read the questions carefully eto na i-read ko na and then Number one, study figure at the right. Nakikita nyo na which letter corresponds to the epicenter of an earthquake. So, may, le may letter saan? A, B, C, D. Kung anong letter dyan sa A, B, C, D na yan, yung epicenter. And then, yun yung sagot. Number two, what government agency is tasked to determine the magnitude of an earthquake in the Philippines? A, M, M, D, A. That's Metro Manila Development Authority, BNDRRMC, National Disaster Risk Reduction Man and Management Council, C. Pagasa, Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical Astronomical Services Administration, or D. FIVOX, Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. Next, number three, Jennifer is sitting on a sofa when suddenly she feels an earthquake. Which has a vibration like one passing of a heavy truck. Okay? Heavy truck. Kasi may isa dyan na uh, light truck. Okay? So, what intensity does Jennifer feel? A. Intensity 1. B. Intensity 2. C. Intensity 3. Or D. Intensity 4. Next. Uh, study the graph again to the right which letter corresponds to an active fault yung A uh, dating gumalaw pero sa present and future hindi na yung B dating gumalaw gumagalaw ng present at gumagalaw pa 
at gagalaw pa ng future. And then yung C, uh, gumalaw, tas hindi gumalaw na mahaba, tas gumalaw ng future. So, alin dyan ang active fault? Uh, number five, is there a relationship between the presence of active faults with the occurrence of earthquake in the Philippines? A. No. Earthquake does not occur in areas where there are active faults. B. Yes. Earthquake happen most likely in areas where there are active faults. C. No. There is no direct relationship between the presence of active faults with the occurrence of earthquake in the Philippines. Or D. Yes. The presence of active faults indicates that earthquakes will not happen at all. So, if you are true, let's check. For number 1, the correct answer is B. Epi means above, di ba? Kasi ang focus mo yung letter A. So, above it is the epicenter. That's B, boy. Number 2, the correct answer is D, Fivox. Number 3, the correct answer is D, intensity 4. Intensity 3 kasi, light track lang. Okay? Pero yung heavy na, it's intensity 4 na. Ano na siya? Uh, moderately strong next number 4 correct answer is boy letter B yan yung straight ano, diagonal active yan gumalaw ng past gumagalaw ng present at gagalaw pa ng future and number 5 correct answer is B boy yes earthquake happens most likely in areas where there are active faults so if you uh, are through checking your own module for the post-test, then I guess uh, marami kayo natutunan at maraming check yan at pasado kayo. So, ayun lang. And um, be prepared when uh, a natural disaster like this happens. Okay? So, stay safe, keep safe, and thank you for listening. Goodbye!